So welcome everybody. Today we are going to talk about teaching writing at the A1 level. So when we have students at the very beginning level of English at the A1 level, we're just teaching them a few simple things about writing. Um, the first thing that we work on is handwriting. So for some of our students, um, they need to know like how to hold a pen, how to write <laughs> on paper. We do recommend that all students be able to write in their first language before we teach them to write in English. Um, but if students speak um, Mandarin, for example, they are used to writing with very different characters. Um, or if they speak um, Arabic, they are used to writing from right to left instead of from left to right. And so it can take a long time for them just to learn how to form the letters of the alphabet and to be able to write them on paper. So if your student comes from a language background like Portuguese, uh, it will be easy, easier for them to write because we're using the same alphabet and the same form. Um, so handwriting, how much time you spend on that depends on your student's background and also what they need. It may be um, that your students need to write um, handwritten letters at work. And so then you would probably want to spend more time practicing their handwriting if that's something that's important for them to do every day. However, for a lot of students, most of their communication is done electronically through typing. And if they are preparing for the TOEFL exam, they need to do that with a uh, traditional computer keyboard. And so it's probably better to spend more time um, having them work on their typing skills than their handwriting skills if that's something that will be more useful in their everyday life. So regardless of, of um, their personal life and work and goals, they still should be able to write basic letters so that they can fill out forms. Because if they're at the airport or the doctor's office, they will very often be handed a paper form and they need to be able to at least print their name and basic information on it. So that's just a basic survival skill. Um, but <laughs> I may be a little biased against this because I have terrible handwriting. And when I was a kid, my teachers made me practice for hours and hours and hours to form my letters. And I never got very good at it. <laughs> I think it has a lot to do with fine motor skills. And some of us just are not very good at that. Um, so it, again, look at your students and what they need to do practically in real life and make your um, assignments according to to those needs. Um, the other thing we, we work on at the A1 level, besides basic handwriting, is sentences. So we want students to understand that words make sentences. And a sentence is a complete thought with a subject and a verb. So 
um, the most simple sentence you can have is just has two words. For example, Jesus cried. So Jesus is the subject and cried is the verb. That is a complete thought and that is a basic sentence. So at the beginning A1 level, we'll do a lot with those um, subject verb sentences, you know, things like I talk, you listen, we read. Those are all complete sentences with a subject and a verb. Um, once they, they start to understand that concept, um, we also, the next step up is a sentence with a subject, a verb, and an object. So an example is Jesus healed the woman. So Jesus is the subject, the actor in the sentence. Healed is the verb. And the woman is the object that the verb is acting upon. And so um, students will also get a lot of practice with their homework assignments and other exercises with subject, verb, object, sentences. So we'll do things like, I read the book, you hold the pen, etc. All right. So any questions on, on this first part of what we cover in the A1 level of writing? No, no question from me. Okay. And Prakash, do you have any anything else to add from, from your experiences with your students? Yeah. So it's uh, uh, spending time and uh, is a great thing. And another thing is patience on writing, you know, and uh, the great way is to practice and practice and practice. The great way. And uh, uh, in Nepali, it is a little bit difficult for writing. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, there we have the lines in every and every uh, letters. So English is easier to write in Nepal, and oh. Nepal is difficult to write. Okay. Great, oh. that's very interesting. Yeah, and and, and uh, another thing is, uh, yeah, uh, those who are a bit uh, careless, their handwriting is not good. I think. <laughs> I mean, they don't focus and concentrate well. So, like signature analysis, handwriting analysis. Uh, people are uh, uh, have been doing, and they 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 find out the our uh, personality through our handwriting also. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and they're they're actually um, are like employers that will do handwriting analysis to uh, look at your your personality. So um, it it is important to be able to write clearly and legibly. All right, now to get into a few more of the specifics that we teach in writing at the A1 level, um, a, an important concept is for them to understand the difference between capital letters and lowercase letters. Or, or sometimes we call those uppercase letters and lowercase letters. So we want to uh, make sure our students know that we always have a capital letter at the beginning of a sentence. The first letter is capital. Um, and usually all the rest of the letters are 
lowercase unless they are proper names. So the name of a person or a place or a company. Um, and also for the, the months and the days of the week, we use uh, capital letters in English. And so that's different in other languages. They don't necessarily use capital letters for the months and the days. And so we wanna make sure that they um, are aware of those. So for proper names, for months, for days, and the beginning of the sentences, we always wanna make sure that they have a capital letter. And when they forget to do it, um, you know, just point it out to them, you know, if, if they write, for example, uh, the, like the word November with a small N, you know, just point it out to them and say, um, what's wrong with that letter? What do we need to change about that letter? And they very quickly will go, oh, it has to be an uppercase letter. So we, at the A1 level, we're constantly doing that. We're reminding them to use capital letters for people's names for months, for days, and at the start of their sentences. The other thing that we're um, reminding them of is always to put punctuation at the end of the sentence. So once you have your subject and your verb, then you put a punctuation mark. And normally a sentence will have a period at the end or um, it's often called a full stop. And so that's just the little, the little dot at the end of the sentence. Um, so most of the time that's what we are doing. And so that's the first one we teach. We teach them how to put a period at the end of the sentence. We also then will teach the question mark. So the question mark comes at the end of a question. So if I'm asking you a question, where do you live? It's gonna have a question mark at the end. And that's the, the second punctuation mark they need to know. Um, we then, We'll touch on the exclamation point. Um, and it's important that they don't overuse the exclamation points. So exclamation points are used to show strong emotion. If you are very happy or very sad or very angry, you use an exclamation point at the end of your sentence. But normally, you would just use a period. The other one that they need to know at the A1 level is the comma. So commas typically separate items in a list. The fruit of the spirit is love, comma, joy, comma, peace, comma, patience, comma, kindness, comma, goodness, comma, faithfulness, comma, gentleness, comma, and self-control. Um, the comma before the word and is optional. That's called the Oxford comma. And I like to put it in just to avoid misunderstandings. Um, but you will often see sentences without a comma before the word and. So we want to make sure if they're making a list of, of like three things that they've got a comma between item number one and number two to separate them. And then probably the, uh, the most challenging <clears throat> punctuation mark that they learn at the A1 level is the quotation marks. So God said, let there be light. So we use quotation marks when we're quoting exact words that someone said. And we put the comma 
um, after the word said. And then we put the period inside the quotation marks. We can also do that backwards. So uh, let there be light, God said. So then we would put the comma inside the quotation marks. And then God said outside of it. Okay, so those are really the, the, the main things that we're looking at in writing um, at the A1 level. So those are the main points that we are teaching. Do you guys have any questions about these? Um, yes, I have one, Melina. Yeah. Um, um, uh, when I use, because uh, for us in Portuguese, when you say, for example, God said, you put two points. I oh. don't know. Mm -hmm. which, no, and put and say what God says. No. Right. So, so in Portuguese, you would be like, God said, colon. Yeah. Let there be and light. It's, in English, it's wrong because I put the, when I will say in English, in this case, if I say, if I present something, I put comma. Yeah. So, oh, so sometimes in very formal writing, we will use the colon, the two dots called the colon, um, but more commonly in English, we use the comma before the quotation marks. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, okay. Uh, an another thing, uh, when you say the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace. For example, if I have the just free, free things, for example, mm -hmm. the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, comma and pc or uh, uh, i use um comma and together in any case yeah. for, for just three for example because with two jesus and mary for example i put and no right just right. and so if you're just doing the sentence um, the fruit, fruit of the spirit is love, joy, mm -hmm. and peace. Um, you do not need to put a comma after the second thing, but you can. Uh, I recommend I it. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the fruit of the spirit is love, comma, joy, comma, and peace. That's the way mm -hmm. I write it. Um, other people will leave out that comma, but um, that's the, in the light of the world materials. That's the standard we use. We use the comma, the Oxford comma before the word and. Okay. Okay. Thank you. That's okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any, mm -hmm. any mm -hmm. other questions? questions or or comments about no, this? no it's easy to get the point yeah okay great so um some of the ways that we practice you um writing are that we have students writing sentences about the theme pictures we have them, um, let's see, let me see if I've got an example here. Can you guys uh, see this presentation with the sun and the moon? Can, can you see it? Yes. Okay. Thank you. So okay. 
Um, so one thing we would do is have them write sentences about the theme pictures. So we do this in the review quizzes. Um, we ask, what do you see? And then ask them to, to write a question on that. So we might have them write sentences like, um, here, let me insert a new slide. Um, so they could write sentences like, I see the moon, or um, there are three clocks, or uh, we eat, oops, <laughs> we eat lunch at noon. So we can just have them practice writing simple sentences about the theme picture or any anything else, any of the other pictures in there. Um, that's a great way to get them to use the vocabulary word and practice what they're learning about punctuation and capital letters. So that's one place where, where we practice our writing. We also practice writing um, when we get to answering the questions about the Bible story. So we encourage them to write down their answers to those. So after we read the Bible story, we ask, what did God make? And they can write sentences like, God made the heaven and the earth. In um, our listening dictation exercise. So this is very simple. And this is um, just to get them to write individual words. They're going to listen to the words that they hear and then write the words on the line. So if they have, if you're having them practice their handwriting, they can do this on paper or you can have it to have them do it electronically and type it as well. But that's one we do um, that practices their writing. We also have an exercise like this in every lesson where they ask questions and ask their partner. So they'll be doing two things. They'll be right, filling in the blanks to ask a question, and then they'll be writing down the answers that their partners give. So those are all great ways to practice it. Um, in the homework, we also have a lot of writing practice. So um, here they're, they're making sentences using the time. And, and we start out in the beginning levels, it's pretty simple. They're only writing a few words to fill in the blanks. But then as the levels get higher, they're writing longer sentences and they're doing it more independently. Um, this exercise, homework four, is just copying the sentences. So they're not creating anything original, but they're really just focusing on the form of their writing and the spelling, the new sounds so that they can practice that sound spelling correspondence. Here they're practicing the, the letters S and T in a writing exercise. Um, in homework eight, they're typically reading uh, something like a <clears throat> restaurant menu here and then answering the questions and we encourage them to write complete sentences so where it says, what time is breakfast? They could just write six to 10 a.m., but it would be better if we can get them to write, breakfast is from six to 10 a.m. period. And then um, number nine homework is more of a free form writing where they are creating their own sentences 
and they can say, you know, in my country, we eat breakfast at 6 a.m. and we have uh, bacon and eggs. So this is encouraging them to give examples from their, their own lives. So the, there's a lot of opportunities to write in each lesson coming from dictation where they listen and write what they hear to describing things using the words that are provided and, and putting them down to write simple sentences to more personal writing where they can be a little bit more creative um, and write things that are um, about their own personal experiences. So we try to in include a variety of writing exercises and depending on your students, they may have special things they need to do. I had one student who really wanted to be able to send birthday cards and get well cards to people in her family. And so um, she, she wanted to be able to write just um, a, a few sentences, you know, thinking about you, hope you have a wonderful day. And so we practiced writing those phrases that she could put on greeting cards. So that was important to her. Others may have to fill out reports at work. I've had students who worked in factories and when the machine breaks down, they have to write a little report at what time did the machine break down and what was the problem? So um, they had to learn to write things like the machine overheated at five o'clock and um, I called the mechanic and he came at 515 and worked on it for 30 minutes and the machine started working again at 545. So that was something very important. They needed to write every day in a report. And so we worked on the words, the phrases, the punctuation that they needed to do that. So ask your students what they need. Um, and those will be the writing exercises that will be most meaningful for them that will help them the most. <laughs> 